the first chair, the first as a, as a Westerner coming to Ukraine 23 years ago, the first thing that I always struck Western Europeans was how incredibly grey and depressing <laughs> Soviet and post-Soviet cities were. And then the, the first changes were superficial, which was the cars started to change color and you started having advertisements. But obviously these changes are, are very superficial and although I knew, I read because I studied Soviet politics many years ago before I became a doctor, I, I knew I would find a, a, a difficult situation in the hospitals. But I, but I was shocked by just how primitive the conditions were in the hospitals I saw on my first visit. But it was obvious that the colleagues, the medical colleagues I met, were educated, intelligent people. And they, they knew the conditions they were working in were very bad compared to what was available in the West. The, the, the slightly tortured, complicated attitudes so many people had in the Soviet Union towards the West, one of both, both envy and threat and dislike. So it was a complicated attitude. And I, I also worked in, many years ago now, I visited hospitals in Russia as well, and had, I know many Russian colleagues. And there is clearly a huge difference, which has now become much more apparent, between the difference between Ukrainians and Russians. The, the Russians have retreated into this, how do I put it, they've, they've retreated into this backward-looking, mystical view of you know, Moscow as the third Rome, and uh, this sort of view that there's something uniquely special about Russian history. And I've often felt this was partly a sort of inferiority complex. Which goes back to the days of Peter the Great. Whereas you, the Ukrainians do not suffer from Russian pride and Russian inferiority. Feelings of inferiority. Perhaps because the, because the Ruthenians and the Ukrainians were an oppressed people for so long. And Ukraine has welcomed contact with the West. And although the, some of the senior post-Soviet post professors I met felt threatened by exposure to modern Western medicine, and I had the good fortune to meet my 
my long-term colleague Igor Kurilets. And the doctors who work with him, like my good friend Andrei. And it has been it has been wonderful to see see medicine improving steadily over the years, both in the both in my colleagues' departments and elsewhere in Ukraine. But having said that, of course, many, many problems remain. With the combination of a, of a relatively poor, relatively poor economy. With a, with, a, with a government which is economically weak. Combined with the continuing problem of corruption. Which is a very fundamental part of Ukrainian society. But we say in English every, every difficulty is an opportunity. We, we say in English, every difficulty is an opportunity. And despite the best, best efforts of President Putin, I, I remain genuinely optimistic about the future of Ukraine. But I must confess my optimism steadily rises the further I drive west from Kiev. Lviv. And although I know I know many I know most of the great European cities. And I do not say it's just to please you or flatter you. I really do find Lviv one of the most exciting, dynamic and beautiful cities and you like museums or rather old and rather tired. But, but Lviv, although it has many beautiful little buildings, feels like a young, enthusiastic city growing and flourishing. And although I do not want to get involved in the complexities of the relationship between Western Ukraine and Eastern Ukraine, it seems to me that surely the future of Ukraine is, is from the West, looking West. And being more Western. But then, of course, you have the what you call in English the, the dead weight of Russia trying to pull you back, pull you back into the past. But 